I said to my, I said to the Lord, I said, I am not going to die today. It's not my time. And that was the last thing, you know, whatever you're filled with will come out in pressure situations or in, in tri trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. If you're filled with the right stuff, the right stuff's going to come out. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here. We are excited to jump into our first real guest after the Turn the Tables series that we that? finished. That a quote unquote? <laughs> quote unquote. Oh, like, nice. We have, we have some of our favorite people, and we want to start the year off strong with Tommy and Christy Jane Greco. How are y'all? We are great. We're doing great. I'm looking forward to this for a little while now. We're glad that you're here, and... Dan here is Hi guys. a puzzle, Hi, Dan. which I'll I know y'all know Dan well. He goes to your Thrive group, right? <laughs> yes, yes. We are fortunate to go there. He comes over Some of our best friends. Too. Yeah. Can't get him to stop, <coughs> can you? <They've laughs> Not if we feed him. <laughs> <laughs> They've tried hard. True. That's true. Well, we're glad you're here. You're a big part of our Heritage family. Um, you guys serve not only in Thrive groups with uh, Thrive group uh, leaders, but you also are on the worship team where most people see you, hear you, enjoy the gifts that you are, um, but we would love to hear a little bit more about what else you do, what else you're about, and kind of okay. open the conversation up. Yeah, I guess I'll start. Um, so we, we, outside of church, we enjoy mountain biking, and I enjoy cooking. I, it's uh, kind of a passion that has grown probably over the last 20 years or so. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, I did. I, you know, my mom was an amazing cook. And Still is. I, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's fair. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um, yeah, she Hi, will mom. be missed. <laughs> <laughs> she is still with us, and she is cooking fine food. Um, but anyways, growing up with that, I would uh, take leftovers to, to work, just a minimum wage job, and I'd have, like, a full meal. And people are like, what are you eating? Because I'd heat it up in the microwave. It's when I worked at a movie theater, and um, that's kind of how my whole childhood was. I, when, when I was a kid, funny story, uh, my mom makes this spinach pie kind of thing. It's super good eggs, garlic, parmesan, like all the things like Ita Italians love. And I would bring that to school and friends would be like, what are you eating? Because it's this green triangle. Right. <laughs> it looks like space food, right? But it was so good. But anyways, yeah, I always grew up around good cooking and, and good food and uh, having people surrounding, uh, surrounding that. And that was always fun. I enjoyed that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And like like you said, we're we're active people. We like to be outside. We like to be doing things. We like to spend time with with our family and our friends. And so that's I don't know who we are. That's awesome. Now, how, how'd y'all end up here at Heritage? Well, so uh, I grew up in Southern California pretty much my whole life, and um, you know, as things kind of changed there culturally and politically, and um, we lived in San Diego specifically before we moved here. It just got really expensive. And so we just kind of started looking and talking and, uh, it Praying. took, a, it took a couple mm -hmm. years for us to kind of come to the decision to finally move. Um, but when we did, it was funny. I was, we, uh, the plan was to drive to Arizona, pick up her mom's, our, her parents' RV, and then we we're going to drive that to Texas. And then, live in her sister's backyard for a couple months while we figured out where we wanted to move and pay off some um, debt and all that. And it, it was funny as we were driving out, um, accepted the job, like all, everything was all set. And I had this thought of like, what are you doing? <laughs> we have three little kids, yeah, you know, like, going out here, have no house. Doing? Yeah. <clears throat> Homeschool. But, we're going to be doing all of this out of an RV. <laughs> But the but when we got here, uh, and I kind of started a couple days at work, and it wasn't necessarily related to work specifically, but we were in the kitchen, and I said, uh, you remember when I went to Zambia uh, on that trip, and I told you I knew the Lord wanted me to go on that? And she said, yeah. I said, that's how I feel about Texas. And so whatever happened between what am I doing to when we got here, it was 100% a wow. solid just – God decision. We, we knew it was the right thing to do. Um, so how we came to Heritage, we were going to her sister's church for several months, and it kind of just wasn't feeding us the way we wanted to be fed and what we needed. And 
but every Sunday we would drive by Heritage and we'd see it. My parents were actually coming. Oh, wow. And my mom was like, you know, I think you would really like it here. You know, the pastor, you know, is let's the move of the spirit and he teaches really well. And, and so we just got to talking about it and we're like, okay, let's go. And, and then we never, never looked back. Yeah. Never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I've said like, you know, if it, if, if we moved here only to, for our family to be planted in this church, it was worth it because we have been fed so much. Our, our kids have been fed so much. Like our spiritual life has just gone up and up and it continues to, even after being here for 11 years, yeah. You know, like there's, it's always step on step. You're always, if you're willing to, to receive and, and glean what they're, what they're presenting or, you know, get ready to receive, you will progress. So. Yeah. I agree. Th- there's some really great, I mean, there's a lot of great people in our church and, and a lot of them had a huge impact on, on us. We, yeah. like I grew up, we're faith church, so I know and lived a lot of it. Uh, we kind of had a, a little bit of a interesting situation at one kind of word of faith church. And I think for us, it soured our hearts a little bit and coming to heritage just reawakened yeah. all that um, stuff in us. And like I said, just having a lot of really amazing people surrounding us has, has mm-hmm. been pivotal to our, our growth and, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and we feel like heritage is what church should be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. I agree. When you <coughs> you can go ahead and it, that jump be in a, anytime. That should be like a motto somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I was going to TM that. Print it up, man. Print it up. Tra- you know, Christy <laughs> trademarks. Are right? Yeah, it's nice. Sure. CTM. Um, <laughs> well, so part of that is, is again, a, a huge part of why we love it here is because of you guys. Like, I think mm-hmm. my wife and I have said it, at, like, you know, you guys were trailblazers for what we did. Mm. You came from California. You came here. And you were the first people that we knew to hear that we were, your life group is what we went first. Um but you guys model something I think is really what has inspired us in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of the, the young couples or couples in general, like you guys serve on worship. You have a life group that you do. I mean, like you guys are so community centric. I mean, your kids, you have three amazing kids that every one of them is involved at this church. It's yeah. not mm-hmm. like this isn't a, we're walking it out differently. It is your top to, you know, top to bottom, your family's here involved. Like what's that like? Was that, I mean, it's very, it seems very purposeful in terms of like how you live your life. Yeah, well, and we, for our kids, we, we've always wanted to be an example of what we want them to be, you know, not just say one thing, do another. And so, like, even from, from young, we've just encouraged them to have some kind of service, community service, whether it's at church or somewhere else, they get to kind of make that, that decision. But we've, we've just encouraged them to, to have something that they're giving out, not just getting in. And so, from the get-go, they've all had their, their areas that they wanted to serve in, and for our boys, you know, with, with the production and stuff, you know, their, their grandpa was part of that. So he mm-hmm. kind of helped mentor them into that and train them with stuff. And Gianna just has a heart for kids. And so she loves, you know, being a part of that, but it's just, it's who we are. It's part of our family. So. Yeah. I, I think for both of us, so <clears throat> her parents were pastors and my parents were always involved at church. We, we were there all the time and it was just something that we both saw and, uh, encouraging our kids because uh, you know when you are doing something outside of yourself that's kind of when you really start to understand who God is and how he works because he's all about the Lord's always about people yeah <clears throat> besides the the natural growth that you saw in your kids moving from California to here um, do you see them beginning to step into you know the assignment on their life and those kind of things and how has the church played a role in that development yeah, it's it. That's that's funny you bring that up because a couple of weeks ago I was talking with Alex, who's our youth pastor, and um, I've been wanting to tell him this for a while. And the comment I told him was, "Just thank you for everything you pour into our kids, because it makes such a big difference when they have somebody outside of the home to mm-hmm. model what the Christian life looks like, what a believer's life looks like." And so, um, you know they've all had some experience, I should say a lot of experience with the youth being poured into and then having the opportunity to pour into other people. And I know that just, it it warms our heart every time we hear about it. And a lot of times we hear about what's going on in the youth from other people. (laughs) They don't come and tell us what they're (laughs) doing. We don't know. Somebody, (laughs) somebody gave the offering message or somebody did this and and we don't necessarily hear about it from, from the teenagers, but it's, it's still good. And they just, they get, 
they get poured into so much just from different people. And even if, you know, the, the youth pastors or whoever there is um, saying the same things we say, our kids in general are more apt to listen when it's not coming from mom and dad. Right. And so, like, I just very much appreciate <laughs> the, the reinforcement yeah. of, you know, not just life lessons, but, you know, just spiritual things, all of it, you know, and that they, they genuinely, the, the, the leadership genuinely cares about the kids. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. You know, they genuinely um, yeah. want to see them succeed. They want to see them grow. And it's not just, you know, we're doing our job, right. check off a box. Okay, come back next week. Right. We had a great service. Check. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, that there's, yeah. there's intentionality yeah. And, yeah. and prayer behind the whole thing. Yeah. Um, most people see you. You both on the worship team get to hear you play the mm-hmm. guitar and hear you sing. What has worship been uh, like serving in the local church? But also, I know you had told me once you're you've been a musician a musician for as long as you've been alive. I think <laughs> almost probably. yeah. So I started playing guitar when I was 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm 52 now. I'm ashamed <laughs> to say that, but look fantastic. You look you. awesome, babe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know how to make a girl blush, don't you? Um, yeah, so I've been uh, playing guitar for a long time, and, and I think it was around 18 or 19 that I started playing at church. And so I've, I've been on many worship teams and in many services, and I, I couldn't think of doing church any other way. It's just, uh, for me, playing and worshiping in that way is like, it's like breathing. Like, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, I know what to do with myself, but it's such an expression of my relationship with the Lord that I get to take my instrument with me mm-hmm. in his presence. I, 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 I absolutely love it. I, my dad played bass when I was a kid, so I've always been around worship teams literally since five years old, if you want to go back that far. And the really great thing about the experiences that I've had as, as a kid was um, knowing what the presence of the Lord feels like in worship. Mm-hmm. And I can sometimes just close my eyes and and feel what that was like and that's what i love about worship you know a lot of people who are musicians even in church they forget that when we're on stage we're still worshiping we're not just playing notes Mm -hmm. and so for me i I try to be very purposeful every time to enter in myself but yeah it's always been a part of who i am yeah and we've been on multiple worship teams with other churches um in the past and i'll say like here it it's it's a different culture in the worship team than other places and like it's not just about the music it's not just about the song like even our our practices are worship sessions you know like we do mm-hmm. work on the technical stuff but it's always comes back to the heart you know the heart being ready for worshiping and blessing the lord mm-hmm. and that's been a to me a great experience just because it's it's helped lift up you know the level of my worship like I have my own worship time, but even at practices, we're delving in almost every week. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's amazing. I always look forward to practices. You know, like other places, you're kind of like, ugh, it's practice. Yeah, it's but fun. here, like, I'm yeah. looking forward to practice every week. And that's been with, you know, the different worship leaders that we've been under here at, at Heritage. Right. It's been it's been wonderful. I've never been asked to be on a worship team. There's, mm. uh, there's a our tambourine player. Well, for, for yeah. good. We well, need a tambourine well, player, man. Yeah. Even then. <laughs> 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 like what's me from Seinfeld? It's all over the map. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you didn't want to say. But, but. <laughs> but speaking of that, like, you, so you guys do worship as a team. I mean, you have your life group leaders. You're on the worship group. You know what I mean? So there's, there's just there's a lot that you guys do in service. How do you find that work? I guess church life balance is the better way to say it. Maybe in terms of you know just the, all the things that you're a part of, you still have that time to really have your own time with the Lord and connect and kind of keep keep things moving forward. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we have had uh, a, a lot of friends over the years, some of whom f- forgot that their family was their ministry too. Yeah. And th- so that's one of the things, one of the things I think that we keep in mind is that our first ministry is, is our kids and each other. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think the other thing is knowing where God wants you and where he doesn't want you. Um, if you are stretching yourself thin it, then you should probably do an inventory on mm-hmm. does God want me in all these places? And we know f- with beyond a shadow of a doubt that what we are actively doing at church is what we're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. I think that 
Mm-hmm. I think that helps. Well, and I think for us too, we have a, a little bit of an edge on, on it because we've homeschooled our kids from the get-go. So we have a lot of family time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not just, you know, after work, after school, trying to get that family time in before we're doing church stuff. Like we we get a lot of time together. Mm-hmm. And even now, especially because both of us work from home a lot. Um, so we have a lot of family time. So it's it's a little easier to, I think, make that that balance. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a great so, question. So I want to ask you about something. <clears throat> Recently, you terrified us. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Christy, Christy specifically. I didn't terrify. <laughs> Christy specifically, but for those who don't know, you had a, a, a pretty sizable health issue. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd, I don't want to, I'll let you explain it probably better of an understanding just to kind of yeah. catch it or not. Go ahead. Well, so uh, in January, uh, January 24th, I mm-hmm. had a massive heart attack. Uh, we found out I had 90% blockage in one of the main arteries on the heart. And um, it was pretty exciting. <laughs> um, we were excited. Was yeah. That the word? I mean, <laughs> That's the word you used. We exactly. were like, yeah. oh, this is. Well, you know, so, okay. So just to lighten it up a little bit, because you know, when somebody has a health issue or uh, sometimes people are a little hesitant to ask about it. I, r- really, for me, it's 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 something that happened. I have no problem talking about it because I know the Lord delivered us from it. And it's so, a testimony now. And yeah, so right. it's a testimony. So I, I actually enjoy talking about it. But, you know, the, the funny thing about it is when we didn't really know if it was a heart attack or if maybe I just was, I don't know, feeling indigestion or something. You don't know, (laughs) you you know, your mind goes to, you know, I'm getting some tightness in my chest and I'm, you know, feeling lightheaded and I'm sweating profusely, which as people who know, know that those are, those are the ones. But they didn't all come at once. So like, (laughs) you know what I mean? So like, I call call that a Tuesday, sir. You know what I mean? Like, what do you do after you eat your meals? So the, the, but the funny thing about it is like, I don't know what a heart attack feels like. I mean, I never had one. I only know what they look like on TV. Right. And and liter- I know this sounds silly, but that's literally what I'm thinking. Like, this doesn't feel like what hap- what they do on TV. You know, they grab their arm and they're like, Wah! you know, and they <laughs> kind of keel over. It didn't feel like that at all. We, we didn't even know what was going on. So, so she called her sister, uh, who is a nurse, and did, she described everything, and her sister said, get in the car and go to the hospital. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what are you doing still sitting on the couch upstairs? So, so we're, we're like, okay. So I, I, I mean, I get up, I walk downstairs, I get changed, you know, like I'm like, we're going out to dinner and <laughs> grab something. And then we walk out and I forgot my phone or whatever. I'm like, I better go get my phone. Like, again, I'm literally in the middle of having this heart attack. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, why don't you But go again, to, to <laughs> say, we weren't 100% sure it was a heart attack at that right. point. We were just like, so, something's off. So we get in the car, uh, in the truck, and um, we get on the road, and immediately she starts just praying. And she's praying, you know, <laughs> for my body to be healed. She, when we get to the hospital, she was praying that the right people would be there to help us and that they would have the wisdom to know what to do. And I, I'm leaning up against the, you know, the glass of the truck with my hand, you know, just because this feels good to do that. And uh, we were just outside the hospital and uh, she, she was praying the whole time. Just speaking to his body. Yeah. And I, I, I said to my, I said to the Lord, I said, I am not going to die today. It's not my time. And that was the last thing I said. And if there was ever a time, I can't think of one in particular, but if there was ever a time that I was concerned about dying, I never thought another second about it after that. Mm. Uh, and so we get to the hospital, uh, and then we get in the back, and, and I'm making jokes, you know. I'm saying, hey, like, you know, it really hurts. And the lady's like, well, you know, how do you rate your pain? And I'm like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, and so two thumbs up if you're listening. Yeah. Two thumbs up. <laughs> two thumbs up, right? Um, yeah. So uh, I'm trying to think of where to to make sure I don't get into too much detail, so we don't run out of time. But um, so there was that whole process. There's like 50 people around, you know, because like I don't know what they yes. call that code something or other, but yeah. they code red. They're like <laughs> they're like surrounding. Get over here. They're code. like surrounding me, and you know, I, I'm in the back, and I'm like, a lot of things happen really fast. Like, where's yeah. my wife? Like, I, right. where's Chrissy? I'm like, can somebody get my wife? And 
I guess she had gone out to move the truck because it was right out. I'm sorry, it was right outside the door. And um, she, okay, we'll get her. She'll she'll be here. And because I was gonna throw a fit if they had said no, you know, there was gonna be some words. But uh, they got me in the back. They ended up putting in a catheter um, and a stent, uh, which um, really was the physical thing that that saved my life. Mm. Really, yeah, for sure. Uh, and well, and she's got her part. Throw too. in, yeah. So, like on my side, like we get there, they take him to the back. I get the truck all situated. I'm in the waiting room, and the the nurse comes out and she says, "Okay, just want to kind of give you an update. He is having a massive heart attack." And so that kind of in the natural was like, "Oh my goodness!" Mm-hmm. Like I had this moment of pure panic. We're young, we're healthy. Like how can this be us? Um, but like I had this moment of moment of panic, and I'm like, just start praying harder, you know. And I just felt this peace. Like, I'm an emotional person, so this is going to go there. Right. But, like, I just had this peace that, like, you don't have to battle. I'm taking care of it. And so, like, seriously, I'm in the waiting room waiting for them to say it's okay for me to go back um, where he's at. And I'm reading my book. Like, I'm not even feeling like I have to press in or, you know, pray it out because it was already taken care of. I wasn't scared that he was going to die anymore. Like after that first couple seconds, it was just, it's going to be okay. He's fine. And, and I'll, and I'll say too, on this side of it, like having your community, your people that are close to you is amazing in times like this. And if you don't have that set ahead of time, going through stuff like this is a, is a whole nother story. Cause I'll say like our, our close friends, family, Steven and Summer, while he was in the hospital, everything, they, they took care of me, not just him. You know, he was getting taken care of with the hospital, but they took care of me, made sure I had meals. Summer even brought up blankies and a, and a pillow for me to sleep with. You know, just having people that, that love on you in these times is amazing. Sorry. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's yeah, okay. and, and the other side of it, too, is that, you know, she especially had – a ton of opportunities to be in fear and doubt because when the doctor who ended up doing the procedure on me yeah. came out to tell her what happened, he said, Want this you is to- before he, they even, they were taking him back. And he just said, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't remember the percentage that he told me, but high percentage of people do not survive this. And he said, I just want to let you know, like, this is a serious thing. It's um, he's we're, we're going to do everything we can for him. But if you need people to be here with you, you need to call them. And so, but even through that, I was like, I'm okay. You know, like I had people calling me, um, his mom, she's like, do you need me to be there? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm okay. If you need to be here for you, come, but, but I'm okay. Um, and so she's like, well, I'm just going to stay home and pray. And I'm like, okay. But, um, you know, multiple people called and like, do you want me to come sit with you and be there with you while it's going on? And I'm, I just, like I said, had a peace. I'm like, I'm Okay. It's all right, you know, just whatever. Stephen came anyway. But, mm-hmm. uh, just like Stephen. <laughs> uh, yeah. That guy. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Be there. <laughs> He's, you know, like, like you guys, you know, it's, they're family. So they, right. yeah. yeah. But it was, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, just having those people around supporting you. But, but just it, it truly was like you can't imagine the, that first moment of, of panic, but then just right away, you know what, it's okay. I don't have to press through. Like it's just. Yeah, it's a good thing. Peace that passes understanding right. became 100% yeah. real in that moment. Yeah. It's like, why aren't you worried? Yeah. Now, we will say, you know, like we Tom Tom mentioned that we prayed specifically for the right people, the right doctors, mm-hmm. the right to be surrounded, you know, with the with the the right people there. Anyway, like the nurses, three of them at least told me, "You got the best doctor. You got the only doctor that will do the procedure this way." Um, which is a an, an, e- an easier recovery time, things like that. So definitely, those prayers were were answered. And, and nurses don't say that lightly. Yeah, I have a list of yeah. doctors who aren't allowed to touch me <laughs> and my family. Oh, wow. So when they say you have the right doctor, <laughs> wow. they mean Holy. all you right. You have the right a little doctor. behind the curtain here. A little yeah. inside baseball. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what are those doctors' names? So I can have that list, please. Can you share that list? Yeah. Every nurse has a list, I promise. Yeah. Um, but the, the neat thing about it, and what I uh, appreciate about your authenticity in this moment, because it's a very vulnerable kind of story about mm-hmm. being real with your faith and understanding that piece, um, you walk through it with 
without discounting the medicine that was involved and the faith mm. that was involved. Mm. Can you take a minute to, to speak to what what that looked like for what does it look like for a believer to walk through a health crisis in faith? Mm. Yeah, so one of the things that I said um, when Pastor Justin asked me to give my testimony uh, that one Sunday was, you know, whatever you're filled with will come out in pressure situations or in te- in tri- trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I liken it to, and I s- said this on Sunday too, was you're no more aware of your humanity as you are when you hit your thumb with a hammer. And so what's your response you know, when you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out, lime juice doesn't come out. So if you're filled with the right stuff, the right stuff's going to come out. So I think for us, faith and mm. prayer and, you know, claiming the promises that we have in the word just came out. It was like the natural response for us. Mm. Uh, and I think that's why there was no fear. There was no doubt. There was nothing but peace. Um, and you know, if if you break your leg, you know, you pray for your healing, but you still go get a cast. Right. Right. And so. Well, I think part of that is, is, you know, already having a life where you hear from the Holy Spirit, right? Like when different things come up, what medical, whatever, you have to be able to, to hear from the Holy Spirit. This is the, what I want you to do. This is the direction you need to go. And you know, major, minor, whatever it is going on, you have to be very deliberate in hearing and then walking that out. You know, like, you know, the Holy Spirit didn't tell us not to go to the whole, go to the hospital or whatever. You know, we're going to do what we know Mm -hmm. to do with wisdom because Mm -hmm. we are, that's part of hearing from the Holy Spirit is already having Mm -hmm. spiritual wisdom, Mm -hmm. right? And so you walk that out and unless the Holy Spirit's saying specifically, clearly, go this direction, Mm -hmm. right? You know, there's other things, minor medical stuff that, some people would have gone to a doctor for that, that we may not because we're hearing specifically for that. But um, it's, it's like he said, what, what are you filled with already? Where, where's your life already with that? And that's what's going to yeah. walk out. Mm-hmm. I, I think, think go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 I think a lot of that goes back to like, we've said multiple times on this podcast about how the people in this community, in this church, like there's always a, going after the next level. There's that real hunger and desire to be after the Holy Spirit and after the Lord in their life. <clears throat> and I've said many times, like, I, I love the people that we mm-hmm. hang out with because the conversations are always, and you guys are examples of that. Like, when I think about that statement, I think about you guys specifically in terms of, like, most of our conversations are about the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, most of our conversation about what's God doing in your life. Mm-hmm. And you guys have such powerful testimonies when it comes to what's God doing in your life. And it's crazy when you ask that question and someone doesn't know the answer. <laughs> You're like, oh, mm-hmm. Versus you guys, there's always like this, God's doing this, like God's mm. doing this. We're excited for this. Like, yeah. that's amazing. You know what I mean? You just don't get that all the time. And that's like reason why I love it. We love you guys. You know what I mean? Because of that. And like when you're walking through this, the fact that when you got squeezed, the Holy Spirit came out. Yeah. The fact that when you got pressed, like I'm going to pray, you know, like I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit. Like, those are the things that are like, ah, you know, yeah. you just love it. Cause that's like the, that integrity of your walk is just amazing. Well, one thing um, that I didn't mention on on that Sunday uh, opportunity was, you know, when Dr. Savell went through his challenge, mm-hmm. I, I, just hearing his testimony and how he was claiming the word and quoting scripture, I remember sitting there, not hoping <laughs> something like that would happen, but <laughs> l- I remember sitting there going, I, I, that's the response that I yeah, would want right. to have mm-hmm. if something yeah. like that happened to me. Right. And I think that planted a seed. Mm-hmm. So when it did happen that was my response. And so Mm -hmm. again, being surrounded in your community is important, but the fact that we have leaders that walk it out Mm -hmm. in public um, and in private Mm -hmm. uh, is I think critical for, because what happens at the head happens with the body. And so we're grateful for that. Mm -hmm. That's good. um, It's just a really good example of being winners in life like y'all are. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that we always ask this question at the end. <laughs> Wait, what? You're getting, <laughs> what is this? Surprise, surprise. Shocker. Um, but. That was nice. Uh-huh. That was nice. That was still good. Okay. That was good. All right. We're getting better, guys. <laughs> uh, so making winners in life is what we do as a church family. It's what we do as a, as a ministry um, from top to the bottom. You see it in, 
and Dr. Seville and Pastor Justin, all of the leadership, all the way down to everybody who walks through the door knows that that's what our church is about. That's what this family is about. Um, what is that statement when you hear making winners in life? What does that mean to y'all? Um, I think for me, it means, I guess, enabling, providing what's needed for someone to be successful in the things of God, the things that matter in life. Um, you know, like there's success in so many different areas, but the things that matter, you know, the things of God, your spiritual life, getting out of, you know, for whatever bondage you might be in, equipping and enabling people to make it to that next level and then make it to that next level to me is, I think what that means. That's awesome. That's a good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Follow follow that. Beat that, baby. Beat that. I mean, I'll try. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we should just quit now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, you know, for me, number one is uh, the word has to be your foundation to, to be a winner in life. Um, you have to have faith and works. You know, you have to believe what the word says, and then you have to you have to do it. Uh, and then I would say, lastly, relationship with the Lord has to be part of that too. So, you know, you get kind of the vertical, the horizontal, and the in the vertical part of that, but everything has to be centered on the on the word and uh th- again i just go back to our our personal experience in our in our marriage has always been um what does the word say i i have a friend i'll tell a really quick story if that's okay who has had kind of a rough life and he's a believer and one time we were, we were texting and he's like sometimes i think god just made me for chaos and i'm like Where's that in the Bible? That was my response. Show me in the Bible where it says that. And then I followed that up with some more positive (laughs) messaging. Just let that right there. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) mic drop. No, uh, and so, again, it just comes, if if the word says it, I I decided a long time ago that if if, if it says it in the word, then I'm just going to believe it. Because either either the whole word is true or none of it's true. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced 100% of it is true, and so... Either you believe it or you don't, right? Mm-hmm. It's true or it's not. Yeah. Walk it out. Yeah. yeah. And I will add in one extra thing. is just that to make winners in life, you have to actually engage with people. Like <laughs> you can't be like selfish in your own little bubble. Like there has to be interaction. Yeah. There has to be, mm-hmm. you know, an outward yeah. connection. Well, I think that's true in your whole life. You I know. We reach so many people, not in only in our church, in, in our body, but with everybody. But yeah. I, you guys are awesome. Uh, we love you guys, seriously. And I think this house is blessed to have you in it. Agreed. I think from top to bottom with the worship and then how you guys just are examples to what you, you do and what you care about is amazing. It really is a blessing to all of us that know you. Mm-hmm. And so I'm so happy you guys are here. Yeah. This is so fun. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> did you, you enjoy it? <laughs> of course you did. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Um, <laughs> this has been a great time. We've had another amazing conversation, a winning conversation, some would say. Um, I would agree. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much. Please check us out next Friday. Obviously, you can see this on YouTube, on all the podcasts and all the other things. We'll have show notes about stuff that's important that's coming up. <laughs> uh, we'll, sure. we'll link their Thrive Group. The Thrive Group. That's what I, yeah. It's crowded, but we'll, we'd love to see you there. Um, no, it's not. It's awesome. Uh, you guys have an amazing time. We'll talk to you soon.